You don't want to lift the tire up off the bead on the one side so it gives you more space. That's to prevent scratching the rim, pretty much put the spoon side on the other side of the rim. Make sure you put your finger on this side and you feel it. You feel it on that side right there. You know it's not going to slip. You give it a push. And now the tire is on, you want to put the tube inside the tire. And then force the tire down. Just like that. Now the tube is all inside the tire. And with the valve, with the rim lock, it means on the, it's on the wrong side of the tire. So you want to flip it around. And here you have to get that onto the other side. So usually I use one and two levers. Just like that. And you push the valve stem, and you push the rim lock in while you're doing that. It'll be a little top. Use another lever to slide in. And then, so it might need a little bit of motivation, so I'm gonna keep that there. And let down and now it's in the proper spot. Flip it back over, and what I like to do, I like to use my bead bite to help me hold the tire down on this side of the valve, on this side of the rim lock. So I'll basically start here, and again with the spoons, you use your finger and you feel, so you feel that it is on the inside of the rim. And you push it all down. And you want to make sure that the valve, the rim lock is in place. And you put this bead buddy in its place. And this holds the, the bead down. So now it's easy for me to go around and just put the tire on. Again, I use my finger. And that's the trick to not scratching the, scratching the rim. If you don't do that and you know it's not on there properly, you can slip the, the spoon and it'll put a slice in your rim. And the customer gets really mad. Again, this becomes natural. Once you get used to it, you just automatically put your finger in anyways. Then once you get to about this part of the tire, almost halfway, it's going to start getting stiffer. As you can see the tire is riding up on top of here. This tire can't, this, this won't be able to go on because of that. So you have to put a tire in there and push it down into the drop center of the rim. Like that. So you fell into the drop center. It's, it's deeper here than it's here, so there's more room, giving you more room on this side of the tire. As you get over here, it does get stiffer. And when I, I use the technique called the rock. I use, I use the rock and roll technique. Basically, I, I let one spoon up, give it the room I need, push it down, make sure it's on the rim. Again, one up, come down. And you put the valve and take your rim lock off. You're done. Make sure it's lubricated well. I like to lube both sides. So I'll flip it over. Put the lube on this side too. Just get out of the tire. Just automatically push the rim lock in place. Screw that down. Check the air pressure, make sure the tire is seated. It's definitely seated on this side. Uh, I run you see about on this IRC tire, the M5B, I run about uh, 10. 
air from 9 to about 4 pounds, that's why it's a little 10. And there we are, we're about 10 right now. And what I like to do is I like to leave these rim lock, I mean these valve stem bolts loose. I don't really tighten them down tight. Because if you ever do spin this tire, at least you have a chance that you won't pull the valve stems off. That goes off, and then the only thing I do is tighten up that rim lock. This is the 12 mil wrench. I'll go grab one. And stretch it on to about no really specific amount of torque. Just kind of turn on to it. It's tight and you get, you get to know it and just give another half turn. And that's it for this wheel here. Make sure it's all seated. It's seated on both sides. And that's it. A brand new IRC muffin, a brand new Warpland wheel. Give it a good dry over. This commercial is now all wet. And it's ready to go. So,